My name is Juliet Nedima Olamo, but I prefer people to call me Nedima um, for two reasons. One, because that's my identity as an African, mm -hmm. so it shows my Africanness, and also because of the meaning behind the name. It is really very unique to mothers, to women, to motherhood. Yes. So uh, basically, it means mother is good. And if you look at the concept of motherhood, it's a whole lot of goodness in it. So I, I just prefer people call me that name. It's way more beautiful when I hear that. Um, you just said it. I'm a Nigerian. Um, I'm from the southern part of Nigeria, uh, but I was born, bred, brought up, schooled, worked, still working and living in the core northern part of Nigeria. Um, by profession, I'm a lawyer. By calling and training, I am an activist. Yes. And um, somewhere down the line in my life, I have found a way to infuse the two, uh, being a lawyer and being an activist. Um, and over the years, we have um, focused more on working with women, uh, women empowerment, bringing out marginalized women from the margins mm -hmm. into the forelights so that their stories and their issues can be looked at and other people who have the resources can turn around and mm -hmm. find ways to empower them so mm -hmm. they can speak, speak for themselves. Um, and then the other thing we do is to also provide legal services to these marginalized women pro bono. Yes. So that means we don't um, charge any legal fees uh, from them. I identify as a queer woman, um, which is something that, because of the context of the country where I live in, it's very like difficult to say most times. But I am beginning to find ways to to beat that, to, to, to come out of the shadow myself, because I cannot say that uh, I am programming, projecting, working, conversing, act, um, being in activism for mm -hmm. women who are marginalized, especially those who identify as LBT, queer plus women, and myself, I am still in the shadows. So I am also trying to find my way around that, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's not really like easy, I would have loved to just say outrightly that for me, uh, a warrior woman would be a feminist, a woman who identifies as a feminist yes. in whatever affairs, in, in whatever they do. But that would be sort of limiting what a warrior woman is in the modern age. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that basically first, a warrior woman mm -hmm. is, is that woman who, in her everyday struggle for survival, still finds the time to provide support to other women in, in whatever fields that they are in, still find time to be creative, mm -hmm. uh, still find time to speak passionately about and around issues that affect women, um, still contributes to issues on equity, equality, gender balance, gender equality. Um, these are women who put their lives in the front line, basically because uh, we know that the society that we live in, mm -hmm. especially in Africa, is so patriarchal that the norm is for women to be in the shadows and for women to be limited in what they can give and in what they can offer, especially those women in the rural areas. But then again, we now have these women who are coming out to say no, but it can't be like this, because if it is like this, we'll have a society that is unequal. And then a set of humans will be suffering just because they do not have voice. So for me first, a warrior woman is that woman who gives voice to other women um, in the little ways that she can. That is one. Two, a warrior woman is also that woman who, irrespective of all the pressures that society have been putting on her, um, especially those who have had the courage to come out from domestic violent relationships and are still committed to giving back to the society in good ways. 
bringing up uh, their children in the best ways that mm -hmm. they can and finding joy in just being alive yes. rather than being in a violent relationship that may eventually lead to their death and that in the twinkle of an eye, the man or the partner would not hesitate to replace them. So again, a warrior woman is that woman who has the courage to walk away very proudly from a violent relationship and then build a career for herself mm -hmm. in whatever way. It doesn't have to be professional. It doesn't have to be formal. It can be informal, but she's alive and contributing to society. And finally, a warrior woman would be that woman who does not simply identify as a woman. She is the woman who would rather see herself as either queer, as, as either a lesbian, as a trans woman, mm -hmm. as a bisexual. These women face a whole lot of discrimination, challenges, threats to their lives, but they are still there. They're mm -hmm. still living. They're still existing. And they are also speaking to these issues of equality, speaking to issues of human rights, ensuring that we create a society where people do not look at these issues as taboo anymore, but are integrated into the everyday living of family, society, religion, professionalism, however else you want to look at it. So for me, these classes, are wherever you find yourself in there, you are a warrior woman. But basically, you are also a feminist. Because once you identify that there are issues of gender inequality and you're speaking to those issues and you're looking and finding ways to empower women to become better, then you are a warrior woman. So that, this is very interesting yes. because I, I don't think up until now that I actually um, see myself as a warrior woman. Um, I, I just see myself as a human being. Yes. But uh, since we're talking about this from this perspective, then I, I think I would um, I would say that I'm a warrior woman because, of course, yes, I speak to women issue. Like, yes. I am very passionate about it. People who know me know me for this. When uh, you see a woman struggling, if you call my attention to that, I'll quickly drop what I am doing and I'm, I'm off to that to, to give as much support as I can. Um, so that is one that, that makes me a warrior woman. Secondly is also the fact that um, I am very passionate about gender equality, more passionate about empowerment, because I feel that when women are empowered, they know their rights, they know how to build the society, they know how to nurture themselves and everyone who is connected to them. When a woman is really balanced in herself, she is very happy and those around her tend to prosper. So for me, it is also the fact that I talk, speak, work, program empowerment. In fact, basically the, 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 the organization that I co-founded in the North is all about empowering because we look at the various issues and we try to empower women to initiate changes, looking and using local resources to stimulate the solutions to whatever the issues are around them. And we find that, that these steps are actually working because then they own the issues and they feel more empowered because you're giving them a level ground to say, look, what are the issues? You identify the issues. Let's look at the solutions from within your community. And so working in the communities for me, now leaving those urban areas and going into the communities yes. is actually showing, telling me that I am a warrior woman because I am putting my life on the line. Basically where I stay um, in the North, it's um, a very conversative society like really conversative because it is 97% Islamic. So we have the Sharia law. And one of the things that, that you find under Islamic law is the fact that it tends to put women behind the men. And so when you're speaking to issues of equality, the men do not want to hear that. So for me, being in the north, really doing that, 
it is also telling myself that, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a warrior because basically I, I am sort of alone, not alone in the sense that there are no other organizations yes. who do this programming, but we are different in the sense that we don't work only with women, yes. we work with minority women, we mm-hmm. work with LBTQ plus identifying women, and we are known for this. So this makes me feel that I am a warrior woman. And also the fact that, well, coming from my background, the background that I came from, um, and being able to achieve without support, really, some of the things that I've set out for myself makes me believe that I'm a warrior woman. And, 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 f- and I feel that this um, is also inspiring because then when people read about me um, mm-hmm. and some people look up to me, they, they tend to believe that they can achieve whatever they have also set yes. out for themselves, out the, irrespective of the hurdles. So I think uh, these are the reasons why I can look at myself and say I am a warrior woman. But I'll be more fulfilled yes. to say that I am a warrior woman when I look back and yes. I see the results of all the hard work. And I see those women who we have been partnering with actually being empowered to partner other women. That will make me look back at my life and say, yes, I am actually a modern day, like we say in my country, Queen Amina, warrior woman. Okay, my biggest battle would actually it would be doing the thing that I I I do now in the north. Um because it took me a lot of of courage to leave um an employment where at least I was very comfortable. I was paying my bills. Yes. Uh, I mean, I was practicing in a very good profession. Um, back in my countries, a lot of respect is attached to you just being called a barrister. So taking that decision to just leave that for the time being, at that time, to co-found the organization that I have presently working in communities was a battle. Because first, um, acceptance for what you do sometimes comes from the fact that you're from that community. So people would want to really accept you because you're one of them. But here I am, living in the north. I am not a Muslim. I do not dress like a Muslim woman. The way you see me now, this is how I am in the north with my hair like this. So the fact that I knew already that these are going to be reasons for rejection was a huge battle. Yes. So, surmounting so all of that, mm. establishing the, 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 the organization, working without getting any help, yes. like, I think for over three years, we were just doing our things, um, was a huge battle that we fought. And it's the, not just me, I think also with my partner, yeah. with those who over time have volunteered with the organization, have uh, worked with us, still working with us. It was really a huge battle. Mm-hmm. But on a personal level, I think it was the battle of accepting who I am <laughs> over the years. Because, yes. I mean, from way back, I've always known that I am this very different person. Um, in the way that I want to express my sexuality. So, and then growing up in, in a very spiritual, religious background, doing the things that I did in church, like being so involved, it was a battle to choose between living my true identity and then pretending to be happy. So being able to be me, to express me, and even though... um. I have not, like I keep telling people, I have not fully come out because I don't think I've had um, uh, an announcement to say, hey, this is me, like, oh, Juliet, I am. Well, you're not doing it on social media. But I have done it in several places, places, like at different levels. Yeah. But I think just accepting me for who I am, it's one battle that I am so, so happy that I conquered. Because there's always that narrative out there 
that what you do is a sin.